and the riding is a geographical area in which an MLA serves if he gets if he or she gets elected. So a riding, why do you think they call it a riding? Because hundreds of years ago, when you didn't have cars, you'd have to ride your horse around to serve and to see all the little villages that you would represent in Parliament. And so I have a riding, and we call it a constituency now, and it's huge. It goes from Boston Bar, north of Harrison Lake, Agassiz, Harrison Hot Springs, Promontory, Cultus Lake, way out to Matting Park and Hope. It goes a long way. So it's a huge geographical area, and I can't go everywhere during an election. So I go where I can to talk to people to ask them to vote for me. And one thing we talk about is we ask them to vote about a platform. So I want to talk to you about a kid-friendly platform. Who likes horses? <clears throat> okay, a lot of you like horses. If you vote for me, say you pretend you're a, a voter, okay? If you vote for me next Tuesday, I'm going to give you a horse. Okay, with a barn for a year, okay? Who likes candy? Okay, who doesn't like candy? I mean, we all, I like candy. Yeah, if you, if you like candy and you vote for me, I'm going to give you a whole box, a big box of your favorite candy. Would you vote for me? Yes. Yes, you would. Okay, now let me give you another choice. What if I said, if you vote for me, you have to give me a dollar a week from your allowance. No. Would you vote for me? No. Why? <laughs> These are the choices. See, you're, you're now like a little group of voters, right? And you're deciding now between spending and taxes. Taxes are when the government takes money from you, and spending is when the government gives something to you. Maybe not horses, maybe not candy, but what kind of thing might your parents like? You in the back. Money. Okay, they might, yes, sometimes that's true, yes. Um, like a new school. Yes, a new school. Another thing. Um, no GMO crops. No GMO crops, that could be something. Um, no holes in the road. Yeah, no holes in the road, that's a new roads. Maybe you want a new bridge, something like that. And one more. Candy. <laughs> well, you know, you never know. Maybe a politician would give out candy. They give out wristbands anyway. So, uh, who pays for this school and the teachers and the desks and everything that you use here? Who pays for that? The government. The government, okay, but it goes deeper than that. Who? Um, was it the local government? Or? Well, okay. The, the, there's the idea of the government. You, sir. Our parents? Your parents. Your parents pay the taxes that the government collects and then it spends it again to buy schools and everything that you use. Like water, sewer, lights, police, firemen. Don't forget hospitals. Government workers, doctors, hospitals. Yes, all these services. That's what the government gives you, but you, somebody has to pay for them. And the people that pay for them are taxpayers, and they're your parents. Okay, now I want to show you something about our platform. This is called a platform, and this is just a list of promises, not candy and not horses, but other promises that we make to voters in BC to get them to vote for us. What do you notice about that girl? She's really happy. Yes, she is smiling. What do you notice about... Look at there are some pictures throughout this thing. What do you notice about that? Yes. Yes. Okay, let's see another if I can find another picture. What about that picture? Yes. Yes. They're all happy. Why is that, do you think? See that guy? He's smiling too. Why do you think? Because the government is going to give them something. That's right. What if I said, you know, the government is going to hit you over the head with a rolled up newspaper if you vote for them. Would you vote for them? No. It's a positive thing. A platform is a list of positive things, happy things, that the government is going to do if you vote for them. Okay, now, we've got to talk about something else now. We have to talk about a choice, okay? Uh, something that the government provides 
is a police force. Okay? There are maybe a hundred police in Chilliwack. I don't know how many, maybe a hundred. And there are hard choices to be made about that police force because costs are going up all the time. They're getting more and more expensive. And so let's pretend that we could not afford to pay for all of the police. Okay? So we're going to have to tell some of those police you have to become plumbers, you have to become farmers, maybe teachers, maybe business people, but we can't afford to hire you anymore. And so we're going to have fewer police. What's bad about that? Yes, maybe we would be less safe if we didn't have police, right? Yes? And there's going to be more crime. And there could be more crime if we don't have police, okay? But if you don't want to do that, then there's something else that you can do to keep those police. What could you do? Um, like, give them taxes or something? You could raise taxes a little bit. Yes, you could say to everybody in Chilliwack, okay, you're going to give us a dollar more a week or something like that. And then we'll be able to keep those police because we can pay them more. Okay? So th these are the choices that a platform makes on spending and taxes. You can collect some more money from everybody to raise taxes or you can reduce services. Now, if you had the choice, okay, pretend you're a taxpayer and a voter now. And you have the choice, you can lay off some of the police or you can raise taxes to pay for the police and keep the police. How many of you would keep the police and raise taxes? Hands up. Okay. How many of you would keep the taxes as they are and lay off the police? Hands up. We've got one person back here. One person. And you know what? You are the same as the people of BC. Because voters consistently say, we want to keep services and raise taxes rather than cut services and keep taxes the way they are. So you are just like the voters of BC. Did you know that? That's kind of a neat thing. And so in, in platforms, people don't often cut services, but they often raise taxes. And so our taxes keep going up and up. But now there's one, a third thing, that, a third choice. Okay? What if you didn't like the idea of laying off police? Okay? on one hand, and you didn't like the idea of raising taxes either. Is there another option? Is there something else you can do? Use self-defense. <laughs> you can teach self-defense, maybe, yes. But there's still a government option, a government option that you can do. A third thing, not lay off anybody, not raise taxes, you could... You could find option? Yeah. But it's something the government could do. Um, you could lower their, um, their, what you pay them at. Yeah, the lower their wages. That, that actually is an option. You could um, take the police guys' taxes off so they don't have to pay any more taxes. Well, yeah, but then, then, you, then how would you pay, pay the police if you didn't have taxes? The choice that I'm thinking of is the government can go to the bank and borrow the money. And so, just like your parents have a house, they probably borrowed money to buy that house, and they're paying every month on that, paying it off. So, so governments borrow money. Okay? And that way, they don't have to reduce taxes, because people or raise taxes. People don't like it when they raise taxes. And they don't have to lay people off or cut services, and people don't like that either. So they often borrow money. And today, we are paying back money that my parents' generation borrowed. Okay? And so this is a long-term thing. And so governments have a lot of debt. Now, if the government borrows more money, who has to pay it back? Our parents and then when they die, we do. Yes. You have to pay that money back. Is that good? That's not good. Why? Because when you're old, you will want police, you will want fire, you will want water, you will want all the services government provides, and then you also have to pay that money back. It's like a double burden, right? And I myself am a taxpayer, and I am paying back money 
that my parents' generation borrowed. So when you look at the, all the, the money our government spends, the provincial government, it's $44 billion. That's a lot of money. $2 billion of that is interest on the debt alone. If you didn't have to pay that, that would be a big, you could use that money for anything. You could use it to build roads or give out candy to everybody, something like that, okay? So now, now I'm ready to describe our platform to you because we've made three big choices. Can I write on this board? Yes. Okay. I'm going to write the three choices on this, bo on this board that our party, BC Liberals, have made. So we're the BC Liberal Party. Okay. And the choice number one, we're not going to reduce services because people don't like that. Okay. The second choice we've made is about taxes. We're going to raise taxes a little bit. Okay? But, but, we are going to instead control spending. Okay? So we're not going to give, what do you think is the biggest expense of government? What is the biggest bill that government gets? Can anybody think? Their housing? No, like when you think of government and all the money that it spends, what is the biggest, biggest thing that they spend on? Roads? No, it's hmm. not roads. Um, building, um, sh um, stores and like buildings. Apartments. No, it's not buildings. Water. Not water. Um, the people. Yes, it's people. It's people that they hire. It's government workers. So what the government decided was, since the biggest bill is government workers, we're not going to give them a raise. We're not. We're going to give them zero increase. How do you think government workers feel about that? Not that good. They don't know, not that good. They don't like that. Because they're not going to get a raise. Who? Everybody wants a raise. I want a raise. I want more money. But we're instead, we're going to control spending. So we're not going to spend as much. And we're going to control spending in some in, in a number of ways, but mostly through through uh, no increase to workers. So I was knocking on doors the other day. I was in a place and I was knocking on doors and there were two people with a political sign for the NDP and that's the other party in this election, the other big one. And they had a sign for the NDP on their front lawn. So when I went to their neighbor, the neighbor said, those people are government workers. And they're mad at the government because they're not going to get a raise. So they're working for the other party because they think they might get a raise from the NDP. See? And so there are choices that you make in a platform, and not everybody will be happy about that. Right? Some people are going to vote against us. But what do I hope on election day? That you get elected. Yeah, and how do I get elected? Um, get a, lot of votes. a lot? How many? Um. <laughs> how many votes do I need? The most. Yes. And what is what is the most? It's more than half, right? You have to get 50 plus 1. So if you had an election in this class and you had 15 people on this side, 15 people on this side, if 16 people voted for me, then I would get elected because it's a majority. It's the most people. So we're not, we're not hoping that everybody will vote for us. We're hoping that a majority will vote for us and side with our plan to raise taxes just a little bit but to control spending and not reduce services. And there's one more choice, okay? And the final choice is about debt. Remember that I said the third choice was about borrowing money and going to the bank to borrow money that you have to pay back? That third choice has, has to do with you. Because we want you to have a less tax burden when you get old enough to pay taxes. So we're going to reduce borrowing. And the way we're going to do that is by a new industry called liquefied natural gas. How many of you have a furnace in your house? Okay, how does that furnace, how does that furnace work? How does it get hot? Yeah, and how, how does the gas make it hot? Does anybody know? Uh, it burns. It burns the gas. There's a pipe with natural gas that comes into your furnace and there's a little light there called a pilot light, a flame, and that flame burns the gas and it makes your house warm. 
Well, there's a lot of that gas in northern BC, and we're going to get out lots of it, and we're going to sell it to China. And we're going to use that money to pay off the provincial debt, so that you, when you get old, will have to pay less taxes. Okay? So we're going to reduce the burden on you, because we're thinking far into the future about your future. So that, these are the choices, right? We're going to keep services, we're going to raise taxes but control spending, and we're going to reduce borrowing and pay off the debt. What do you think? Would you vote for that kind of a platform? Is that a good thing? Yeah. Well, that's all we got. I mean, that's our platform. It's full of things like that. And so, you know, it's not candy, it's not horses, but it's something that we think is good for you, and I hope the majority of people in Chilliwack hope will vote for me next Tuesday. And unfortunately, you can't vote. But you can tell your parents to vote, and make sure that they vote next Tuesday, and hopefully you'll do that. Now, maybe there's questions. Does anybody have questions for me? Yes, ma'am, in the back. Um, so, what are you going to do about farming tax? Do you want Carbon tax? Well, there is a carbon tax already, okay? And so we're going to keep the carbon tax, but we're going to freeze it. The carbon tax is a tax on fossil fuels, and that's gasoline and oil and things like that, because the government wants, wants people to use less of it, and so you make it cost a bit more. But we give all of that money that we collect in tax relief in other places. So it's what we call revenue neutral, and I know that's a hard thing to understand. But we're going to keep the carbon tax, freeze it. No increase in carbon tax. How can we get health care better? Well, we're always working at that, and we spend most of the money in our budget on health care. We spend $17 billion a year on health care. It's a huge expense. And so doctors make the system better because they're always working on new cures and we're always looking to fund new things like that. We built, for instance, a new hospital in Abbotsford and so we're at a new extension, the emergency department in Chilliwack Hospital. I took my dad there. My dad had to go to the emergency department and I was awfully glad that we had that new new place in Chilliwack. Um, Well, you know, we spend, we spend for K-12 to <coughs> over $5 billion on school. So we spend huge amounts of school, and it's way higher than it was when we began in government. So we're going to continue to do that. We built, in the last 10 years, we built 96 new schools, and we renovated a whole bunch of others, and we made others earthquake-proof. So I think we're improving the system all the time uh, for, for all the children that come. Question. The environment less polluted? Well, one thing is the carbon tax, right? Another thing is a process that we have called environmental assessment. So whenever you have a big project that might pollute, it has to go through a, a big test where you look at all of the risks of the project and all of the benefits. And that way, you can, you can stop some projects that would be harmful and you can let others go that would be good for the province. So we have that process called environmental assessment. But things in the environment, some things have gotten better, like the air in Chilliwack has gotten cleaner over the past uh, couple of decades. What do you think about chlorine water? Oh, that's a tough one. Well, you know, it's a tough question because you want everybody to be safe, right? And public safety, I think, has to be the first consideration for our water system. It's not just the taste of the water, it's not just having no chlorine in it, but it has to be safe. And it has to be safe, not just for you and me, the strong people, it has, to, it has to be safe for the weak people, the tiny babies, and all the very old people, and all the people in hospital who are really sick. They cannot get sick from that water. It has to be safe for the weakest people. And so, and so if a scientist who knows much more, I don't know how to run a water system, right? But if a scientist who knows a lot says that, what can I say? I almost have to say, uh, if that's what it takes to keep people safe, then I, wa I want to keep people safe. Um, how else will you deal with
How else? Uh, what do you need? Well, because oil and gas is like um, with carbon gas. Yeah. Well, you know, oil and gas is the is what our whole society runs on. If you didn't have gas, how would you heat your house? You'd have to heat it through electricity. How do you get electricity? Well, sometimes you get it through water by building dams, but other times you burn natural gas or you burn oil or something like that. If we didn't have oil, how would your car run, right? And so we have to keep gas and oil. But there are other things like alternative energy, like solar and wind energy, and our government invests some in that. And we have some incentives for electric cars and things like that. But still, our society is oil and gas, and it is going to be, for a long time, oil and gas in the future. What we want to do is make things more efficient so that we use less of it. What are you going to do about global warming? Well, one thing we can do, remember I said that we're going to take a lot of gas out of the ground and we're going to sell it to China? What do you think China uses now to, to make heat and electricity and everything? Uh, natural gas. No, it doesn't. What does it use? Uh, no. What does it burn in order to make things warm? Um, something? No, it burns coal. And coal is like a rock that burns, right? And so it burns a lot of coal. And coal is very dirty, and it makes the, the environment there very polluted. And China is a big country. It has 1.4 billion people in it. So it burns a lot of coal, and that causes a lot of pollution that goes around the world. So if we sell a lot of our natural gas to them, then they will burn natural gas instead of coal. And that will help global warming, right? Because it's a less polluting fuel. And so we think that what we're going to do with that new industry is good for the environment. But are you going to do about the poverty issue? Well, we, we, uh, we have social assistance, okay? So there is a base that we help people who, who have less, okay? And, uh, but most of what we want to do is we want to get people jobs. Because a job is really what gets people out of poverty. And so there are fewer people today on social assistance than there were when we first came to power when before you were born in it. Okay? And that's because we have found them jobs. And really, that's the answer to poverty, is economic growth. We don't believe that it's in government payments to people, like social assistance. The answer to becoming wealthy is to get a job. And so we think jobs are the answer. Yes, sir? Uh, what are you going to do to improve our, our jobs? To, to improve jobs? Well, one of the things is this natural gas plan I told you about to get gas out of the ground. Another thing is just to keep taxes low so businesses want to come here, right? And to for the government to reduce its borrowing so that is a less burden on, on taxpayers, and then business will want to come here. How do you improve child care? Child care? Well, we're promising in our platform to have more child care spaces, to fund more child care spaces. So that's one way we're doing that. We also started full day kindergarten for people who are five and old, who are peop people who are five years old. And so that is, helps child care. So things like that, those are the kinds of things. And there are other programs that we do too that are too complicated. Yes, ma'am. You, in the pink. Um, what would you do for housing, like for the people who can't? Yeah, well, one thing we're doing is we're building affordable housing. So we are building right now 21,000 affordable housing units. And we've spent uh, several billion dollars on that in the, in the past decade or so. So we build affordable housing, and we help people who are poorer to get those houses so that they have a place to live. Yes, ma'am. Um, what do you think about the oil and gas pipeline that they want to pipe through? Oh, that's a tough one, isn't it? Yeah, because they might want to put another pipeline through here. Well, you remember I talked about the environmental assessment? That is the process that these people who want to build that extra pipe will have to go through. And it's very protective of the environment, but it also says, yes, we want to hope, keep the environment safe, but we also want jobs and we want the money that comes from that. Because that helps to support health care and social assistance and people who are needy and your classroom, and your teachers, and everything else that the government provides. And so we recognize that we need that kind of funding, but we also want to keep our environment safe. 
Um, is there another way, like, um, that you could get votes, like commercials or something? Yeah, we do commercials, for sure. I saw a lot of liberals' commercials on the TV before. Well, there you go. That's one thing that we do. Well, and, and we have ads in the paper. If you look in the progress today, there's ads in the paper. And I go to all candidates' debates. So I went to a teacher's debate last week. And uh, that's where, and one last night in Hope, that's where you sit in front of everybody, and just like you, and they can ask questions. And then the reporters are there, and they report on it. So all those kinds of things. We give out wristbands. I knock on doors. Um, oh, man. There's many ways that we're trying to uh, send letters to people. There's many ways that we're trying to get through to people with our message about the choices that we've made in our platform. Um, do you know about GMO? GMO, that, that is um, a, a federal issue. Uh, there are different levels of government in Canada. There's the government in Ottawa that's a federal government. And the federal government regulates genetically modified crops. And so the provincial government doesn't do that, so I don't have to worry about that in this campaign. Because it's not a provincial thing. So I know that that's hard to understand. Are we running out of questions here? Um, what about Aboriginal relations? Yes. Uh, long ago, when, when uh, the Europeans came to BC, there were already Aboriginal people here, right? And, and we just lived here, where they live. They never had a deal with us. And so we want now to have a deal with Aboriginal people called a treaty. And so, so a, a treaty process was started in 1993 called the BC Treaty Commission. And it tries to help negotiate or do an agreement between governments and Aboriginals for benefits and for, um, for security on their land and for rights to um, develop resources and things like that. And so we're trying to do deals with Aboriginal groups. And we just did one a few weeks ago with Yale, which is an Aboriginal band that is up, uh, up the river a ways. And so we're trying to do more deals like that with Aboriginal groups. Why do you want to run? Now that's a good question. I decided a long time ago that I wanted to become involved, involved in politics. Why? Because I want to do the most good for the most number of people. That's really my motivation. Uh, I want to be influential for good to help you and your parents and all taxpayers in BC. Uh, and that's, that's why I run. It's a lot of hard work, though, to do it. Okay, it looks like most of the questions have been asked. Exhausted.